I mean, just last year alone in 2023, uh, the people who visited from China represented over 600 million dollars in economic opportunities through tourism. And so we want to uh, talk to airlines and promote tourism uh, and encourage others to uh, invest in San Francisco. And this is an important relationship that needs to be nurtured. And this is why we're taking a, a great delegation of, of various leaders from all over uh, San Francisco. The big emphasis then will be trying to increase uh, the air routes. Yeah, so we're meeting with three airlines because we want to increase the number of direct flights, mostly because we have, you know, few direct flights leaving on a daily basis and we want to increase that. Even outside tourism, what are some of the areas that you're hoping to sort of find synergies between San Francisco and China? especially with San Francisco uh, being the AI capital of the world. There is a lot going on in artificial intelligence here, and we want to make sure that we are connected to China as a global leader in terms of those business opportunities, those investments, offices that could open here, and in some cases, universities that could set up in San Francisco as a way to bridge that gap, to develop relationships, and also with some of the various development opportunities and what we're looking to do to change downtown, we're of course looking for investors. The latest numbers that I saw, and this is for the U.S. as a whole, that in 2019 there were 370,000 Chinese students visiting the U.S. and now there's 290,000. And for Americans going to China, I think it was about 10,000 students in China and now it's down to 1,000. Mm. So tell me about the importance of creating more student exchanges. And it's important because we have to cultivate the next generation. We have to make sure that we are bilingual, that we are uh, maintaining those cross-cultural relationships, and that we are continuing the success of what we've had in the past with what happens with education means growth, development, and the next generation of leaders. As thousands of tourists from China assess whether they want to travel to the U.S., I think it's important to address some of the negative headlines that have hit San Francisco. This idea of a doom loop, a sort of downward spiral of homelessness, crime. Do you think that's a fair assessment, that, that whole doom loop idea? Yeah, and I think many of those headlines are very outdated. And in fact, um, you know, and they also don't, tell the real story of San Francisco. There's the perception versus reality. And like most major cities in the U.S. after the pandemic, San Francisco did struggle. We struggled uh, with public safety and we struggled with, you know, work from home and reopening businesses and investments. And we're in a different phase of our recovery now. We have the lowest crime rate we've had in 10 years, not including the pandemic. We see those numbers continuing and in fact, Crime was down almost 40% more in the month of March this year than it was last year. When you look at San Francisco and its numbers in other cities across the country, we're at the bottom. A number of viral incidents created a bit of a challenge for us. I mean, people were very, at the height of what was happening around anti-Asian hate, um, there were 60 incidents in 2022. Half of those were committed by one person. You know, everyone used San Francisco as a poster child for, you know, what was happening in the U.S. around public safety. And I think that, especially when we go to China, this is going to be the conversation that we have with people we meet with is, how do they feel about San Francisco and how we provide them with the facts of what's actually going on in San Francisco to encourage them to want to be in San Francisco. Finally, I want to talk about something very dear to your heart, panda diplomacy. Tell me about your desire to bring pandas to the San Francisco Zoo. When San Francisco was selected by President Biden to host APEC, I was over the moon. The first thing I thought about is, I hope and pray President Xi comes to San Francisco because this could be an opportunity for not only bridge building, but also panda diplomacy. And so when I went to President Xi's dinner and the first thing he talked about was panda diplomacy, I got extremely excited about what that could mean because the first sister city relationship was established in the United States here between San Francisco and Shanghai. The first consulate for China was right here in San Francisco, the first Chinatown in the 1800s, right here in San Francisco. And so my hope is that in this trip, we have an opportunity 
uh, to convince uh, the people of China that are responsible for the decision that San Francisco could be really an amazing opportunity for the important people-to-people -people relationship that the president continues to talk about. And I have my fingers crossed, hoping that we can make it so.